What is going on everybody? Uh, today we are installing a set of four uh, OEM Mopar window vent visors. These should be the in-channel version. Um, I will post links in the description for this set, which is for the crew cab, as well as the quad cab. Um, I will also post a few other popular ones like WeatherTech if you purchase those. Um, the reason I went with the OEM is because it was a hundred bucks for all four, which is like the same price if not maybe cheaper than WeatherTech and with, as with a lot of people uh, I prefer to get OEM whenever possible um, just because it's typically a better fit so I'm gonna go ahead and get started I've already pulled out the driver's side front um, vent all right as you can see here it has an L on it for left um, gonna have to rip like you had to rip open the plastic bag there's no zipper or anything um, same with this just be careful that you don't like bend or snap the plastic um, I can see that they are they appear to be smoked almost I don't know if it's picking up on camera it almost has it might just be this film I'll have to get this film off but it almost seems like kind of a dark brown smoke to it kind of hard to tell but and then it's got the Ram logo there all right, I think my eyes are playing tricks on me. I think it's my glasses. I'm not really seeing that brown tint I was talking about uh, anymore. It's kind of hard to tell though, because it's not sunny out, but you can see it's just a smoke. And of course, after you've already unwrapped it twice, there's another sticker to take off. Okay, now we are finally ready to put it in. Um, mine has this little like guard on the bottom. I'm gonna leave that on. Unless I'm having fitment issues, I'm guessing that's supposed to stay kind of as like an anti-rattle thing. Um, so we're going to turn the ignition on and roll the window down. Alright, now the instructions say to install these the same way as a WeatherTech in-channel one, which is just slip it in behind the mirror. <clears throat> and then you're going to have to bow it out at the top to tuck this side in they say to have it down to like there bow it out and you're supposed to lower um, the visor about a half inch from the top to slip this in so I'm gonna use two hands for this all right I've just got it into place and just to give you an idea how much you got to bend this puppy it's quite a bit like you might think you're gonna break it. <laughs> um, so I definitely don't recommend doing it in the cold like I'm doing it. I just don't have a better place to do it right now. So <sighs> once it is in place like that, you should be able to um, kind of tilt and just feed it along the way. So once I got the bottom here and this corner in, I went back to this corner and made sure to get that in. That's gonna give you the most amount of room. Uh, and then now you can see just kind of slowly and carefully tuck again probably easier with two hands but I need to film okay now as you're rounding this arch and getting closer to the end here it's gonna seem like the lip is stretching a, a lot up here and gonna break but it won't just keep using two hands to twist it into the channel and it will straighten itself out. Now you can see I'm getting caught on another little lip here. So what do I have to do to fix that? There we go. Just had to pull it down a little bit. Yeah, hopefully you can see there is like a smaller secondary seal right here. You can see it's folded and then it goes normal again. And there it's folded again. So I'm going to take like a real small flat blade screwdriver and just go between uh, the visor and that seal and get it pulled out. Um, so it's on this side. So fun fact, um, it was tucked too hard here. I couldn't get it pulled out without breaking something. So I ended up pulling this whole vent back off and being more careful once I started from this corner uh, going up. And wouldn't you know, if you um, <laughs> don't pinch that small weather stripping at the same time, this actually goes in quite a bit easier. So there we go, driver's side installed. I'll roll the window up quick. 
Now I do not have any window tint. So you can hear the, <laughs> you can see the motor's working too hard. It uh, stopped the auto up feature. The only problem with the in-channel ones. Now, that's not always gonna be the case. Um, I'm giving it a couple taps up because it's gonna have to work on it. You know, and I, and I had that problem on my weather techs as well. Um, w but once the windows stay up for a while, they kind of wear in. Um, <clears throat> the only time I ever had an issue, um, you know, after a couple of weeks or a couple of months with the auto up features, if I left my windows down like all day and then hit auto up, um, then they would have a little bit of trouble. But if you're, you know, going through the drive through or something after you've had these on, for a, a week or so, um, typically the auto up will push right through it because they've worn in a little bit more. So um, yeah, no window tint uh, yet anyways, but just to give you an idea how it looks, uh, we're gonna go repeat the same step on the passenger side and then we'll do the rear. I just wanted to show you guys this real quick because um, I did just literally quit filming here and then I hit the auto up and you can hear it struggling, but it did go up. Let's see if it does it again. Yep, it went up all the way without uh, kicking back down and it's literally been maybe five minutes. So yeah, you can definitely hear it working harder, but they do wear in. Boom, number two. All right, now you're not out of the woods just yet, at least not if you have a crew cab. Now, I'm not sure if this is the same for the quad cab. So if you have this for the quad cab, um, pay closer attention to your directions here. Um, they might not have the extra supports being a smaller door, uh, but with the rear on the crew cab, there's these little metal brackets here. And these dinky, dinky little, see if I can fish them out for you. Here's two brackets, tiny. And then these little clips that hold them to the visor. So, the directions were pretty uh, bland and didn't really tell which direction stuff faced. Didn't do a good job explaining. So I did some trial and error. I put the clips both ways and I found out that the best fit is with it um, how it is here or it sticks out. So now I actually have to get this one out of here somehow, <laughs> which sucks because these things, there we go, they have like teeth on them. So what you want to do is you know if you're on the other side that's gonna be the same thing you're looking at it like this you want the tab to be coming out of the bottom facing you okay so I'm gonna pull this down out of the way for now they wanted you to test fit it first so you'll push up and you'll kind of feel it you gotta push like up till you can't push anymore and then you can feel it, it's on like a rail almost. Um, and it's got a pretty good bite. So now what you wanna do is again, after you peel off your lefty sticker that I forgot to do, <clears throat> you'll see there's notches here. One there and one here in the visor. So you wanna get your little tabs lined up with where the slots are going to be and then now we're going to pull the visor down i'm going to take the lefty sticker off and i'm going to peel um, this adhesive tape covering off and then we're going to pop it up into place all right the pr protective film for the adhesive is off now when we have this in place i'm going to push we're going to have to guide the little brackets behind the visor as you're pushing it up so i'm going to use two hands here um, since i'm going to have to hold two brackets at once Okay, hopefully you can see that there. There's just a small gap between the visor and the bracket. Um, so now all that's left is you're going to use your one hand on the inside of the window to hold the bracket while you install these problematic looking <laughs> baby clips uh, from the outside. Now they do need to be popped like right there. You don't want to push these in yet. Um, Again, the directions are pretty vague. It doesn't say which way this needs to come from. I'm going to guess that since the plastic uh, visor has bigger holes, that the bigger head will go on that end. So I'm going to push them in 
from the outside and see how that goes. All right, so there we go. There's one of them in. Does seem to be the way that it goes. Um, <laughs> these are actually pretty tough to push down because you've got to pinch with one hand on the bracket and pinch the visor together so it's a nice tight fit because the uh, stems or the shanks on these are not very long right here as you can see if this thing would focus there we go so this little tiny bit right here has to go through the <clears throat> metal bracket and the plastic visor which the plastic is pretty thick so um, it's actually pretty hard to push this down i actually ended up using uh like my key fob end here and just pushing just because um, it was hurting the thumb a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the second clip in and then show you the finished product. All right, there we are. As you can see, the rear one does not have the RAM logo, but that's fine. It does not need to be overdone. Um, get a close up again of these little guys. Again, if you have the quad cab, make sure you check the instructions a little closer. Um, I would I would guess it would be the same steps if you have to do anything at all, um, but still double check. Now, obviously, we repeat the same steps on the other side until all four visors are installed. Hopefully, this video helped you out. If it did, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe for more videos like this. As you can see, there's going to be more goodies coming soon. And make sure to check me out on Facebook at Tony the Truck Guy. Thanks for watching.